Welcome to my new channel, Tani Music Talk. Today we are so excited to welcome the world's leading classical pianist, Alessandra Kosantia, the first prize winner of the author Rubinstein competition. So without further ado, let's start it. So the first question goes actually for a student, Francis. How would you describe your teacher? I remember when I when I'm studying with uh, Mr. Corsantia, I never feel like he put me as a student. His teaching philosophy is treat every student like his colleague. I think that's one thing is very different from what I experienced. And he's like my dad, asking how am I doing in the school, how is my academic. So he's not only a teacher, it's like mentor, family type of teacher. Current experiences, uh, performing experience enhances your teaching philosophy. Uh, what is your philosophy of music in education? When you are a performer, that has to be the number one thing you do, always. It will never forgive you if you will put anything else in your life on the same level. It's supposed to completely take you full, consume you. The same goes to the ballet dancers, for instance, and many other uh, professions which require a total uncompromised uh, dedication. When I teach, I never, never attended any pedagogy seminars. I don't, I don't know how to teach. <laughs> I don't believe there is such thing. You know, of course, I use, and every teacher uses their intuition and their combination of a cumulative uh, combination of their experience, of their talent, of their taste, of their understanding psychology of students, mm -hmm. also their understanding that different students may require totally different things that they need, um, and sometimes quite opposite from one another. Very recently actually I found myself telling one student exact diametrically opposite thing that I just told another, another student in the same piece. And, uh, and I kind of caught myself doing that and then I sort of, I wanted to trace back because at first it scared me because it's too much, you know, I thought that it shouldn't be right. But then I traced all the reasons, I rewinded both experiences and probably if I would have to do it again, I would do it exactly the same way. I still think that those two different individuals were in need of the opposite treatment of the same piece. The, usually it's not that simple. It's quite complex, of course, very, very interesting. It is also deeply attached to the fact that all of us, the performers, we are students for life. We will never stop being a student. Mm. So the process in the classroom is not a teacher teaching student, but it is a student teaching student. It, it's true, I'm not, there is no exaggeration. So I know that everything I do is an experiment. There is nothing set in stone, at least as I know. I, what I, whatever I'm saying is just yeah. my own uh, point of view, and of course I don't expect uh, these to be universally shared uh, among, but uh, that's what uh, that's the angle I wanted to start opening mm. your your question. And of course, there are m many other things that could be uh, could be continued uh, to talk about. Just one thing I will mention: psychological factor is single most important factor in teaching process. I think no matter who is teaching or which school yeah. or w which continent culture, language, because the process of, of performing and listening and composing, it, is all, it all has to do with human psychology, which is inside our brain. This is something that we cannot really uh, find the worldly um, definition of. It is because music does not exist, you know, it's, it's elusive. It always changes. The, the fact that it's written by genius composers and it's being shared with us for free, mm -hmm. ultimate gift 
to all of us, to all of us living people, it doesn't change it. Because every single time with every different individual, it has to be married with him. It has to be married, it has to be a marriage of love every time. Not just marriage of respect. Okay. Not just marriage of a certain uh, uh, important quality. It has to be all out mm -hmm. marriage. Uh, and then, then something interesting and of course every time the unique will be born. So this uniqueness make makes it so interesting and deeply attached to a psychology of each specific individual who does it. Well, so it's, it's very interesting. Your talk would just remind me of one statement that art is an illusion. Also, I think that's how you could make a student turn into an artist, not just forever, forever. So I reach out to a quite a famous foundation in China, it's called Shoulder Action. And they're specifically targeting to help to give more access of education resources. Children are our future. So to provide children have a better education resources, better education opportunity, is the most important thing that we can offer for them. There will be three concert events in the beginning of the 2012. All profit from the concert will go to the foundation in support for children's brighter future. In the same month of January, on the 23rd to 26th, I will be traveling to Bulgaria in their international festival, winter music evenings event. I will be performing Tchaikovsky first piano concerto with Maestro Grigor and with the great Hazardic Symphony Orchestra. Move on to February 1st. I will be performing in Columbia University on the Spring Festival Gala event, which I'm very excited and really can't wait to join and be part of this great event. And I will be performing Wo Me and My Motherland. 